Hi, I'm Jay Evans. I'm an artist in the video game industry. I've been working in this industry for a while and I'm always on the lookout for cool new ways of taking 3D sketches quickly from 3D sketch to in, in a game engine. In this case, in this demo, I'd like to show going from Oculus Medium to Unreal 4. Through the middle, we're going to use Instalod, and that's going to take care of a lot of the more tedious aspects of doing this process. Things like retopology, unwrap, and baking. We're going to give that all to Instalod, and we're just going to focus on quick iteration of 3D Sketch to Game Engine. In this case, I'm using Medium. You could use any 3D software you want, but for the purpose of concepting, there's a lot of advantages to using Medium. It's fast, it's fun, and it has a really unprecedented feel for scale and shapes once you're in there. You do give up a lot of the fine surface control and fine detailing. But like I said, for this kind of big, bigger picture concept type stuff, it works great. Let's take a look at the final sculpt. So here, here you can see where I ended up in medium. Most of the big forms, medium forms are there. Not a lot of the surface detailing is there. It's about three hours of work. You go through multiple variations. You can, it's very quick to iterate in here. But let's just say this is the one we want to take to the game engine. We want to see it there. Traditionally, we'd have to go retopo it, unwrap that, apply materials, and it's a bit of a long process, so we're gonna speed that up. What we do is export this out of medium at its maximum settings. And import it into Maya. Out of medium, you're gonna get an OBJ. When it comes in here, it'll probably be some random rotation and a scale that is kind of arbitrary. We'll just fix that quickly. We'll group everything. You can see the uh, how it's pretty high poly. And we're going to scale this up a bit to match our scene. Whoa. Probably do this too. There we go. Move it up to the ground plane. And I'm going to want to history freeze transforms. All that jazz. All right, so let's take a look at where we're at. This is the raw mesh out of medium. If I start zooming in super close, you can start seeing how a lot of the edges kind of do get a little blobby, and we do lose a bit of detail when we start zooming in. Another problem I identified here was on some of these tech areas that I kit bashed into medium, we had some mesh uh, kind of corruption as part of it from going to voxels and back. None of this matters that much. We could just proceed from here to Unreal because, again, we're trying to get a rough idea of what the shapes and materials on this thing are. But I wanted to take this chance to just show you what some of the things Instalog can do is. And that's... Uh, I want to talk about this remesh feature it has. If we look in Instalod's toolbar of all these tabs, optimize is your standard LOD generation. Uh, you start with a high poly model, do some sort of decimation, you end up with a lower poly model. But remesh is actually the really cool one. I'm going to pop over to just another example just so we can explain it a bit better. So in this example, I just have random meshes random uh, layout of them. Some are intersecting, some are by themselves. What's important though is that every one of them has a completely different construction method, topology type, topology density, oh, ultra low poly closed, low poly with open faces. We have a triangulated really dense mesh here and then a quadded mesh medium density over here. And the cool thing is with remesh, you can basically throw any geometry you want at it. 
It works best with closed geometry. If you sometimes if you get some thin faces close to each other, you can have some minor problems, but really it's pretty solid. By selecting all of these and remeshing, it's going I'll show you what it gives me back. It gives me back a newly remeshed object um, with UVs, baked textures at my desired poly count. And it does a pretty good job. So we can apply these kind of things back on our own model. This is my model ready for remeshing. So what did I do here? I uh, deleted the extra wheels. We're gonna just remesh one wheel and then copy it around so we don't end up with a whole bunch of wasted texture space. And I went into some of these uh, high poly areas that I had corruption and I just dropped in my original kit bash piece. It's totally different format. It's ultra high poly and a bunch of pieces, but it doesn't matter. I just threw it in there. At this stage, you can really combine whatever you want or take away whatever you want of your mesh. It's up to you. Another consideration at this point was how did it break up the textures? This is If this was just one object, I would need a one really big texture to get a good enough resolution. So what I did is break it up into three separate texture groups. The wheel, the main body, and all the tech components. What I'm going to do is remesh each of them individually, bake all their textures individually, so I'll end up with three, uh, three texture sets. This is a good time to go over the remesh options. I'll use the wheel for example. Under the remesh tab, the most obvious one is maximum triangles. Sure, we're going to do 20,000 triangles for the wheel and probably 100,000 triangles for the body. That sounds like a high polygon count, but for our purposes of concept, we we'll really just want to capture the most detail we can. We're not really concerned about frame rate. If you wanted to make a gameplay proxy or something that was actually playable, you can enter a much lower polygon number. Sliding down the menu under UV, our unwrap strategy. Since this is a hard surface model, we're going to choose hard surface axial. If it was organic, we could choose organic. And gutter size, since we're baking 4K maps, we're going to set this at 16. The other tab we're interested in is actually way over here, the Bake Output tab. Under the Output folders and file names, we want to make sure we give a path to export all our baked maps. For our map size, we're going to choose 4K. And then down here, we're interested in these checkboxes. Traditionally, we'd be baking all these in Substance Painter, but we're going to let Instalod bake all these for us. We'll check off all the ones we need for her, for our bake. We'll leave them all at their default settings, except under tangent space. We're going to make sure binaural per fragment is checked, and we're going to choose direct X for our output tangent space. You can use either, but you need to make sure you follow it through Substance Painter to Unreal. Once all those settings are set, you basically go to your remesh tab, Select your object or group or group of objects and you basically hit remesh. Uh, what this does is sends the mesh out of Maya to Instalod. Uh, the cool thing is that once the mesh gets sent out of, out of Maya, you're free to use Maya to do whatever you want while it's calculating. If you look in the log, you can watch it calculate. We're already up to 10%. We're almost done. I'm just going to cancel this. So I can show you the finished result. And this is our remeshed version. I just applied some simple material so you can see the material breakup we had on it. Then I copied our one wheel around to all the spots so we have six wheels again. 
you can see the type of mesh. He did a pretty cool job on the wheels, preserving all the tread blocks. And each of these meshes, of course, has its own UVs. And it's been baked with the associated textures. I'm going to select all these, File, Export Selection, as an FBX. And we're going to take it into Substance Painter. In Substance, we're just going to go File, New, select our FBX. Document resolution, we'll keep it 2K. Normal map format, we'll make sure we match what we had in Instalaw, DirectX, Compute, Tangent, Space per Fragment. Then we'll go to Add. And here we will add all the maps that we had baked in Instalaw. And we'll hit OK. So here's our model. None of the maps are assigned yet. We want to confirm we have all three materials up here. And down here under Project, we want to make sure all our maps are here. We'll start with the wheel, and I'll just quickly show how we assign our maps. We're going to assign our normal map, world space map, IT map, AO, curvature, position, and thickness map. So you can see how these are set up right at a rock. And the, you can see the quality of the bakes too. Pretty good for a fully automatic setup. This file has the startup maps applied to the entire vehicle. So I'm not going to get into how to texture a material in Substance Painter. There's a lot of amazing tutorials out there to show you how to do that. But I'll just show a very quick demo on the wheel about the general idea of using masks to texture. You create a few folders, uh, wheel, Tire, bolts, and generally for each of these I'm going to assign a color mask where I'm going to pick the colors that were generated by Instalod. And pick the bolts for red. Now we have three folders all masked out correctly. And what I'm going to do here is go to my smart materials. I have a collection I've built myself, some I've bought off of Gumroad, and you can make your own materials, obviously. We have a rubber tire. Let's drop that on the tire. Oh, I just realized we're working in the wrong layer. That's easy to fix. We'll grab all these, cut and let's paste them on the correct layer. There's our rubber tire. Let's check out some of our metals. Let's uh, put, let's give yellow wheels, sounds cool. And something dark for the bolts, how about these? So I mean that's the general idea of using masks to get started in texturing. But this is probably the longer part of this entire process. If I pop open to the finished version, you can see it's kind of got a military vibe. We have some emissives added for the lights, some decals, uh, some different surfaces, like kind of grip tape so people can walk across the top and a metal for the body and some battery packs and lights and wires. Uh, generally, this is about as far as we're going to take it in here. 
and we're going to send it over to Unreal to kind of validate our material choices and put it in some scenes and kind of work on a piece of concept. To do that, we want to make sure we export our textures correctly. So we go File, Export Textures, choose your output folder. PNG or TGAs can work. For configuration, you want to choose Unreal Engine 4 Pact. And for the texture sets, we're going to max them all out to our baked resolution of 4K. And we'll hit export. All right, so here we are in Unreal. First thing we're going to do is make a few folders. Materials, textures, meshes. Uh, this is just to help us stay organized a bit. Importing your stuff into Unreal is very straightforward. Uh, we're just going to drag and drop our texture maps out, that came out of Substance into Unreal. Drag and drop. Uh, this will take just a minute. And once your textures are imported, there's one setting you're going to want to adjust. If you go to the Occlusion Roughness Metallic Textures that were generated, I have three of them in this case, open them. We want to make sure that sRGB is off. This is a, you need this for any materials that are used as masks. This is for them to render correctly. Next up the mesh, same thing, drag and drop, grab the same one that we sent to Painter. It's one option in here that we want to make sure we hit and that's the import normal method. Uh, we want to make sure import normals and tangents is on. Go ahead and hit import. Should take a second. <clears throat> Opening up our static mesh, you should see slots for three materials. We just want to confirm that they're there. Uh, now it's time to make some materials to apply our textures to. Just going to minimize this. We're going to head over to our materials folder and we will make some new materials. Let's call it uh, body, make another one, wheels, another one I'll call it kit. And in one of these materials, we need to drag and drop our the appropriate textures into it so that we can use them. This is body, I'm gonna grab all my three body textures, drag and drop these into the material. And I'll just organize these so we can see what we're doing. I wanna connect our normal to the normal slot, connect our color to the color slot, and then our occlusion, occlusion roughness metallic in that order using the red, green, and blue channels. I'm gonna go occlusion roughness metallic hit apply hit save and let's go ahead and do that for the other two materials now that we have all three materials created we will open our APC mesh and it's really just about dragging and dropping those new materials to where they belong wheels, body, and the kit. Should look like something like this once it's all applied. Go ahead and hit save. At this point uh, we're pretty much finished. Uh, you can add some lights, some camera, uh, some whatever other cool things you want to build out your scene. Go ahead and Make some cool creative shots, but I think it holds up really well for the amount of uh, work, the amount of time we put into it. Uh, we get to see the design, we get to see the big shapes, we get to make sure everything is there without having to spend a ton of work on retopology, baking, and stuff like that. Uh, I think this is a cool workflow. Uh, I'm probably going to use it again. Uh, let me know how it works out for you. Uh, thanks for listening.